kitty cat. Come here, mama. Hello. Say hello. Say hello to the people. They want to say hello to you. They say hello. No. Okay, fine. Oh, you always leave me. She's being um kitty bread right now. It's like real bread, but um you can't eat it and you cannot make a sandwich with it. This is my best friend. As many of you know, I'm a second year evening law student at Georgetown. And on top of school, I work full time. Today's video is gonna be part two of me talking about some of the drawbacks of being a part-time law student. If you'd like to learn what some of the drawbacks are, make sure you stay tuned. I've included a link down below for part one of the series. But before I get started, make sure you hit me with a like and a subscribe. YouTube is a fun hobby for me and likes and subscribes and comments, mostly comments, make it all feel worth it for me. Also, if you have questions or comments, feel free to drop me a line down in the comment section or reach out to me on my Instagram. Okay, so as mentioned, today's video is gonna be part two of my series where I describe some of the drawbacks of being a part-time law student and a full-time worker. In today's video, I'll be talking about drawbacks, including internships, summer associateships, and clerkships, pressure to quit your job, competition, and maintaining a social life slash networking while you're in school. So let's start with the juicy bit, which is internships, summer associateships, and federal clerkships, or just clerkships generally. They don't have to be federal. I'll start by saying these are some of the biggest and most important job opportunities that you'll get and have access to as a law student. Ultimately, most people go to law school to get a job afterwards, right? And not just any job, but a particularly well-paying job in the legal field. While I'm just a second year student and I haven't explored all of these opportunities quite yet, I have faced some setbacks so far. And I'm gonna talk about what some of those setbacks have been and why they're really logistically difficult for part-time students who work full-time to accommodate. One of the opportunities that 1L students typically pursue after their first year of law school is a summer associateship or as an intern. What's particularly great about being a summer associate or an intern somewhere is that it gives you a gauge of whether you're actually going to like the legal field that you're thinking about working in when you graduate. You get the opportunity to explore work culture, potentially some of the personalities that you'll be working with, all kinds of really cool, helpful, useful, and valuable stuff. Most summer associate and internship positions are a standard Standard 10 weeks. Some of them are a little bit more, some are a little bit less. But either way, it's logistically really difficult for part-time students, especially those who work full-time, to land these kinds of opportunities. You either have to have a job that's willing to allow you to take time off, or you can do what a lot of my classmates have done, which is quit their jobs for these opportunities. As many of us who have jobs know, finding a job that's gonna be willing to let you take off 10 weeks or basically an entire summer to work somewhere else, those are pretty hard to come by. Especially if your full-time job is one that pays you a livable wage and you're expected to work salaried hours or work a minimum of 40 hours a week. I'll give you an example of one of the obstacles I came up against last summer. So fortunately, I met my first criteria where my job was gonna allow me to take unpaid leave off which was amazing. I basically hit the jackpot and I'd even found an opportunity where I'd be able to work as a public interest law intern at a government agency. But the problem with a lot of public interest internships is that they don't pay. And while the university had a stipend that they were willing to pay law students if they took a public interest internship, this actually wasn't an option that was available to students who worked full time. And the reason for that is because the university had a cap on the amount of money that a student could make throughout the summer. So while I was able to get the unpaid time off for my full time job and find an internship, and potentially find funding, the fact that I had a full-time job knocked me out of consideration for even getting funding for my free internship. Mind you, that stipend wasn't even a lot of money, but it did remind me of just another way that the law profession and the law profession matriculation system and culture is not set up for part-time students. It's not set up for people that have jobs in other fields. It's not really set up for people who decide to go to school part-time. And that brings me to my next point, which is pressure to quit your job as a part-time law student. As I mentioned, many law students who go to law school during the day 
do internships between their first and second year, or more importantly, during the summer between their second and their third year. So when it comes to logistics, here's what the norm ends up being. Many part-time students will do a summer associateship between their third year and their fourth year. And right before that summer associateship starts, they'll typically work their full-time job all three years up until the summer of their third year. Well, they'll quit their job, take a summer associateship, and then go to class full-time during their fourth year so that when they graduate, they can take the bar without having the pressure of full-time work and then start a job at a law firm. But let's get into why that's extremely difficult. Here's the deal, and this is pretty obvious, but I'm a part-time law student. Part of the reason why I'm a part-time law student is because I can't afford to take out a literal ass load of student loans just to attend school. I'm a first-generation law student, and if I don't pay my bills, nobody's gonna pay them. If I could afford and thought it would be financially responsible for me to go to law school full-time, believe me, I would do that. But I'm gonna be honest, just the idea of quitting my job and not working for a full year, that's horrifying. I've been working since I was 16 years old, and even now, and I don't know how I'm gonna approach that, but hopefully I'll figure it out. And in the same category as quitting your job, that brings me to my next point, which is competition with other students in your section or in your cohort. I don't know if they call it a cohort, if it's law school. We just call it sections. I don't know, whatever. Competition amongst other law students as a part-time student. As you can guess, students who don't work full-time have a lot more time on their hands than students who do. Now, I'm in my second year, but if I had to guess, probably around one-fourth of the students that started out with me as part-time law students have either switched entirely to the day program or have quit their jobs. Now, that being said, that's great for them. I have nothing against it. Also, full disclosure, my section mates are the most badass people, possibly on the face of the planet. But that being said, those students who started out as part-time students and switched to full-time still have class with students who are exclusively part-time. These students inevitably have way more time and resources to focus on school than I will ever have. If those students also coincidentally perform a little better on an exam than I would, short of quitting my job, there's only so much that's within my control on that matter. Also, aside from my first year doctrinal classes, most of my classes are mixed in with day students and evening students, which means that I get curved against people with a whole wide range and different set of time responsibilities than what I have. While I will say time is not always an indicator of who's gonna do better, but at the same time, it does give students who don't work full-time a little bit of a competitive advantage. As a part-time student, you can pretty much never slack off. Being tired pretty much never matters because there's always gonna be someone in your class that has a lot more time than you and can afford to put 120% into those readings and those exams in a way that you might not have the spoons for. As a part-time student, you can pretty much take no days off. You gotta bring it and you gotta have 200%. And that brings me to my last point, which is having a social life and networking. Now, I know I talked about there being a sense of competitiveness in law school. It's not a bad thing. It's something that's prevalent in pretty much every law school. The colleagues that you make and meet in law school are the most valuable part of law school. Hands down, full stop. And I don't say that lightly. Think about it. When you graduate from law school, who's gonna be the basis of your network in the legal field? Probably a lot of the people that you went to law school with, right? While I will say that my section of fellow evening students does all that we can to stay close-knit and to support each other. But I will say that my interactions outside of that group, outside of my section of fellow evening students, is pretty limited. For example, a lot of the law school or law student networking events or networking events that are held by law firms and things like that are hosted by organizations or at times where people who work full time can't really attend. They'll usually happen during the day or during weekdays during work hours. Even in the event that they're not held during work hours, they're often also held at a time when evening students have class. 
So in short, as a part-time student, you don't get as much access to socialization as I would imagine a full-time student would have access to. But that being said, I guess I can't say that definitively I've never lived life as a full-time student. But anyway, that's pretty much all I got for today. And all I got for my major drawbacks of being a part-time law student. I will say that despite all of these drawbacks, there are gonna be drawbacks of everything that you do. There are drawbacks of being a full-time student. There are drawbacks of everything. I just wanna be transparent about some of the things that I've struggled with as someone who works full-time and someone who goes to law school part-time. But I will say that at the end of the day, part-time law school is still the shit. Also, I forgot to mention this, but I wrote an article with ETS about five ways that the GRE helped me actualize my law school dream. For those of you who aren't familiar with ETS, they're the company that writes the GRE, which is the admissions test that I took instead of the LSAT to get into law school. If you want to read what those five things are, make sure you hit the link down in the description box below. That's all I got for today. Make sure you hit me with a like and a subscribe, and I'll see y'all in a couple of weeks.